Good evening and uh, welcome to the last video of the year for my channel. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the people that have watched, that have uh, shared the videos, that have liked, that have subscribed. So um, I'm my channel now has more than 200 subscribers. I, to be honest, I wasn't expecting that. I was um, just trying it out when I, you know, first uh, when the, I think my first video was just after the pandemic hit or something like that. So I was thinking, hey, why not start a channel? See. Uh, how it, how it works, see if I like it. I do enjoy it. Um, I think I still prefer blogging, uh, but um, with videos I can do um, other things, I can discuss other stuff, which I can't with blogging and vice versa, so I think it complements very well. So thank you to the people that have liked, subscribed, and um, well, if you, you know, if you enjoy the content, um, talk, to, talk to your family about it, have, get them to subscribe to my channel. Well, if they enjoy the kind of stuff I do, stats and and R. So um, this year, so for this last video, I want to do uh, some kind of review of the year. Not, well, not really a review. I just want to discuss a little bit the um, books, uh, packages, uh, content I enjoyed during this year. Um, I am not exhaustive because uh, the video would last way too long. So I'm just showing what I think are at least in my view, the things that I really, really enjoyed. Um, so it doesn't mean that uh, if you if you follow me on Twitter, you'll, you'll see that I like and retweet a lot of bunch of other things. So if you want to have like an exhaustive view, just follow me on Twitter. But here I will show you the things that I think that in 2020 were really good, um, that I really, really enjoyed reading and um, blog posts. Well, mostly mostly books and... and um, Sleep books and packages. So first of all, I just um, so 2020 really sucked for a lot of people. Uh, I cannot complain too much. So let me get this ad out. I cannot complain too much to be honest. Uh, I was really fortunate. Uh, my family and friends. Well, some friends did get COVID, but they, you know, they 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 managed without much issues. Um, but for some other people, of course, this year was quite tragic. But I am. Um, was reading about this uh, this uh, this year 536 that apparently was the worst year ever and if you if you read that it really puts things into perspective now of course i mean if you had a, a personal tragedy reading about this year will not really make things much better perhaps but i think you know if at, at the level of the humanity humanity has gone through worse definitely so I think we'll we'll make it. Well, we're gonna make it. So that was just like a little little intro. So let's um, let's hang in there. Um, so first things first. So what one of the very first things I um, I used this year and uh, I enjoyed using and um, I I well I, I used it and then I left the company <laughs> where I used that. So I haven't touched it since then. But um, I really enjoyed using eCharts 4R. Um, which is a package uh, that allows you to use eCharts GS, which is some kind of JavaScript library uh, for data visualization. You can use that inside um, Shiny apps, and it's uh, made by John Cohen, I think is how you pronounce his name. Anyway, this 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 package is really nice. It makes some beautiful graphs. Um, let's try to open up the Shiny demo. I'll, I'll sh show you quickly my internet up here is not great so maybe okay it's opening sometimes i, I have issues let's see um so you 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 can generate well maybe if i go oh yeah it, it was coming so you see it's it's very you know responsive it's uh, looks really nice uh, i think i'm not uh, am i recording my cursor or maybe not oh well anyway um so you might not see my cursor but um Whenever you know, whenever I, I grab or I you know here I, I you see that there's these pop-ups that come up. Uh, if you click here or here or whatever, you see that uh, the the you know the the, the network here appears. Uh, it's it's really nice, really responsive. I really really think it's um it's a very very nice package. Creates some very nice uh, graphs. So we, we showed that to the client, we were, we were developing an app um, for a client and they really were very impressed. So, um, so really, it's a, it's a very nice package. If you want to, to create some very 
beautiful and very nice looking shiny apps. Uh, I, I recommend it. Um, it's uh, it's very different than let's say ggplot the, the way you 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 know you you kind of have to relearn a little bit but it's really worth it so um oh by the way all the links and stuff and packages and books and whatever i mentioned uh, i have this um so i'll put up a blog post with just all the links so you can uh, you can just click around you don't need to like uh, pause the video and copy it um yeah so i would uh, i would recommend you you check it out really nice also, John has some other packages, if I'm if I remember correctly. So definitely go on on, on his GitHub, um, and uh, if I, I don't remember everything, but from me if memory serves, he has an, also a book out now, JavaScript for R. I think it's him. I hope so. Um, anyway, maybe let's go on his website. Uh, oh yeah, that that was great as well. That is super great. Like his CV. Like if you're if you're a dev, you can kind of you know all this uh, get all this um, yeah you can you can kind of uh, type a project name like let's go with coronavirus because uh, and then you get so it's very nice very great uh, CV um, and I don't know maybe JavaScript with R was not him but it could have been <laughs> let's let's put it that way anyway just sh check check out this GitHub um, really great packages really great content. So, um, oh yeah, it, th that was him, JavaScript for R what is John. So, okay, I, my memory still kind of functions a little bit. So, I haven't read the book. I have a friend who read it, um, or who is currently reading it. So, um, he, he says it's a very, very nice and interesting book. So, uh, I, 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 again, I, I cannot really recommend it because I haven't read it. But I think, like, from, from his, the quality of his packages, I am fairly certain that it's a great book. So, if you're interested into JavaScript with R and making it function, because I think this is requires you to already know some JavaScript from what my friend told me. So um, it's more like, okay, how can you, if you have those JavaScript skills, how can you make them work well with R? I think that's the gist of the book. If I'm mistaken, I'm sorry, I haven't read it. So, um, but but check it out. I'm sure uh, I'm sure you can. Uh, Definitely, definitely learn quite some stuff. Next uh, package, and next series of packages, actually. Well, that's no, that was uh, so modern dive. Yeah, let's go with modern dive. I actually wanted to show you that last, but okay, why not? So modern dive is a book um, that uh, you can read for free on, on moderndive.com, which I think is really interesting because it um, basically reteaches you stats uh, while keeping in mind that we are living in the 21st century and we have computers. So basically a lot of courses right now that you can take uh, at university are statistics from the 19th um, century. So very, uh, you know, kind of, I, I don't want to say old fashioned, but in a way that's true. Uh, because we learn this, uh, you know, you have this, uh, this, all these tests that you learn and then, you know, if your data is uh, distributed like this or whatever then you have to use this t-test if it's if it's the variances are not equal then you use the welsh test and blah, blah 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 that's all approximations that you had to use in a time before computers because you could not use simulation methods to get the results you wanted so this book teaches you stats by working with simulations by working with uh, resampling methods and all that kind of stuff which is very interesting so even if you have already you know three phds in stats you might still really want to learn that uh, to to read that sorry you might still learn a thing or two i think it's very very interesting because it's it's yeah it basically for i mean this doesn't force you but it basically makes you think about stats problems using uh, simulation approaches which I, I think is are, is really nice so i highly recommend you read it um i i think it's a very nice book and i think uh, that uh, you know even if you're already a uh, seasoned practitioner you should definitely read that because i think you might uh, learn quite some stuff and also it introduces a lot of you know tidyverse packages um schema is also a very nice package that uh, gives you very quickly some summary statistics about uh, uh, you give it a data frame as a as a, um, so it contains a, a function called skim you give it a data frame as an argument and you get some very nice 
and very quick uh, summary statistics for each variable in your data frame. So it's really, I mean, really check it out. I, I think it's a very nice, very nice book. And um, and yeah, as I said, it teaches you stats with, with computers, which is great in the 21st century. Next, uh, Golem. Yes, Golem. I really enjoyed working with Golem this year. So um, it's it's uh, so Golem is um, a framework, opinionated framework, to build production grade shiny apps. There's a book with it, engineering production grade shiny apps. It's made by the French people of um, I think they changed the name of their company. Um, it's I know them as Think R, but I think they might have changed their name. Anyway, um, they make many, many great packages. They uh, they write great blog posts. They share great content on Twitter. So follow them. You you have all all the names here. I mean that that's not all of them, by the way. I think there's there's more working now at the company. Anyway, Golem is really interesting um, because it kind of it forces you to work in a certain way to produce a shiny app. And I think it's definitely the um, cleanest way you can you can work with a shiny app. And also in the book, the book is very interesting. What I really really enjoyed about the book was here in section I think yeah this thing, which is prototyping is crucial. This section and especially their UI first approach. Yeah, the UI first approach. I. You know, when I read it, I think, hey, man, that really makes sense. <laughs> That's really, really a great approach. The idea is that you start creating your Shiny app, but you just focus on the UI first. So you just focus on placing the plots where you need them, um, placing whatever elements of your Shiny app you need. You just work on that first, and you work on making it looking great, etc. Why should you do that? They explain it very well. But basically the idea is that once this is done, most of it is done. And most of you know what the clients want actually is good looking stuff. You know, if you're building apps for clients, what they want is good looking good looking apps. They don't really care about, you know, the um what's on the hood the hood. It could be black magic for all they know. So if you focus on that first and then you know everyone agrees that this looks great, that uh, you know the functionality is there etc that the buttons are in the right place that you have the button that does you know what it has what it's supposed to do then you know building the um, building the logic behind it that goes relatively quickly and to to do this ui first approach they also build a package called shinipsum which contains so it's a play on words with shiny and uh, ipsum so this ipsum um, random randomly generated uh, latin looking text which is not latin but kind of reminds you of that. So they, they built this package that um, basically creates random ggplots or you know random data frames, random stuff. So they have here a little little uh, prototype. So basically what you do is in the server at the service server side of the app, you just call this uh, random DTs if you need a table somewhere, random ggplot if you need a ggplot somewhere, etc etc. And then you know you work on your your UI you look at that if you're happy with it if you say oh that's exactly uh, what i what i want or what the client wants or whatever then you just go back to your code and you just change what's what's inside here and that's a really great way of um of thinking about your shiny app and of um building it so i, I highly recommend you check this you check the book out you check the package out um you check also chinip chinipsum there's also fakir which builds um, like fake data sets if you if you need them um, and shiny shni sh shiny snippets i i don't think i know that one this maybe is a is recent i don't remember having tried this one so check it out as well uh, it might be it might be useful oh yeah it, i mean it does look useful yeah th this gif already convinced me to try it out yeah so check it out. Really, really nice, co nice packages and and great content. Follow them on Twitter. Really, really great. Easy stats. That's another uh, one that I really, really enjoyed using this year, and that I think will probably 
be uh, like uh, like just like the tidyverse one of these collection of packages that you just have to use especially if you're a social scientist if you're an economist or uh, or uh, a political scientist etc i think you will really enjoy this suite of packages they have packages for the effect size they have packages for you know understanding bayesian models they have uh, packages to understand the parameters of the models that you fitted they have uh, packages to assess the performance it's great it's uh, it's i really really think that this is a great suite of package packages um there's there's many you know there's introductions on youtube that i haven't watched but i'm fairly certain they're great i have read i think for by test r i have read their um vignettes uh no wait i'm not in the right yeah i have read their vignettes great vignettes they're still being written um so i think these ones are ready but the more advanced kind of uh, uh i don't remember now but I, th there's like uh, yeah, this yeah if you, you go into examples if you have like the initial stuff that's very very nice very good i highly recommend you read that um it, it teaches you to work with their suite of or at least with some of their packages but really great um, and then you have still some of these examples that are being written, for example, the more advanced are, are being written, but I'm really looking forward to uh, to, to have these packages uh, available. They're great. As far as I know, but this is from memory, as far as I know, this, this uh, by test R specifically works with Stan, I want to say. So if, like, if you fit models with Stan, you can get, you know, the can get uh, you know the, uh, the effects out and uh, HII density intervals etc from stand I'm not a hundred percent sure but I think it does that if I if I remember correctly anyway great suite of packages I really enjoyed uh, working with that I, I like to know that this exists and that I I can oh yeah yeah here here it is here it is. It's, it works with Arston ARM, BRMS, and BiceFact. I was almost certain, but not a hundred percent. So really, um, check it out if you're if you're a practitioner, especially if you're a social scientist. But even if you're not, I, I think there there's. When I say when I say if you're especially if you're a social scientist, I would say this is maybe not as useful if you're only really focusing on, on let's say pure prediction machine learning type of tasks maybe not uh, but if you're really interested into interpretation into uh, you know are my coefficients do they mean something um, is my model how, how how is my model how close is it to reality etc etc i think this suite of packages are really really great so highly recommend that you check it out um, and um, yeah there, there's many of them there's many of these packages so really check it out highly recommend so there i put a link to this um, github um, page so you can then you know uh, just check out the individual packages on your own so next yeah statistical rethinking really enjoyed that one as well uh, so this is a course by um richard mac l reith i think um, which is a course on you know Bayesian stats with R and Stan. Um, I really enjoyed. Uh, so I haven't watched every video yet, uh, and I haven't read. There's also a book. I haven't finished reading the book. I am on chapter seven, and I think I'm on video five, or I will start video five. Anyway, it's great uh, if you want to learn about statistics, uh, Bayesian statistics. But even if you're not really interested into Bayesian um, stats. Or Bayesian approach, I would still recommend that you watch at least the two lectures, the two, the two, maybe the three first lectures, which I think are general enough, and they, you know, they they kind of reintroduce the idea of okay, how do you, you know, what are models, what are, uh, you know, what is actually a probability, what is, I mean, it's very nice, it's really really interesting, and um, Richard uh, is um, is. Uh, a really great teacher like um really I, I really like the way he teaches so highly recommend you check it out you check out the book it has code uh you know for stan it has even python code that i haven't tried but um if it's not entirely you know 100 percent tied to r so if you're like a python user you can i think you can still get a lot of and, and it's very general i mean it's general enough that even if you 
even if you 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 just take the book and you use your your tool of choice whatever it is i think you will still learn a lot so highly recommend check out um, his web page check out the book check out the videos that you can find on youtube really great content really enjoy that then yeah so this is uh okay so th th this uh, i really okay <laughs> this was really interesting because um Evel, so Evel Pars, first of all, congratulations uh, on being a father. Uh, I think this happened very recently, so it, at least it, <laughs> the baby looks uh, quite, quite, uh, quite young. So um, Evel Pars, which I think is his name, I'm sorry, is Xiao Wei. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, so I'll just be calling him Evel Pars. So I, I think I started following him on Twitter because he built this frame, which is an amazing package. If you need to work with data that is larger than RAM, but not big data, like, like not terabyte data, <coughs> but data that is too big to fit in your RAM. So for example, if you have a if you have hundreds of data sets and they all go to they all amount to 50 gigs, for example, right? If you don't have a, a powerful workstation with like with mm, a lot of RAM you you kind of need something like this cream this cream is amazing because it's very simple to use very very simple to use it has some very great vignettes highly recommend you read the vignettes um, you can you can fit uh, you can fit GLMs with, with it that don't uh, you know that don't uh, don't um, fit in, in memory uh, so it's it's very nice and then not only did uh, Evalpars produce this great package, he went on to so and you can you know there's a there's a GitHub. He went on to create uh, this great YouTube channel where he also talks a lot about Julia, Ju the Julia programming language, which I think I, I really think it's very promising. Um, it looks very very interesting and um, and yeah, so check out this channel, check out this screen, great package. Uh, whenever I have this whenever i'm confronted to a problem like that I, I use it it's really great um and you know here it's it's called tai tai zg zg maybe tai zg so sorry if i um mispronounce your name but you can you can follow him on twitter at evil evil parse um shares a lot of great content and uh, and has a great YouTube channel, so you know check it out. The videos are really interesting. I really enjoyed that one on implementing deploy across in Julia. Really great. Next is oh yeah, <laughs> Mike. Yeah, Mike Mike FC. So I I'm sorry, I don't know his name, um, but Mike is great. So Mike has this Twitter uh, account called Cool but Useless, and uh, as the handle implies. He builds a lot of uh, cool but useless packages, but but sometimes I'm a bit disappointed because sometimes it does build packages that are cool and useful, so I feel a bit cheated. And um, but 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 the content he does is great. So first of all, why why is Mike great? First of all, he's a bird, so he's a bird and he has more rep GitHub repositories than you. So just think about your life choices. Secondly, he writes some very cool packages. And uh, some of them useless, but some of, some of them very useful. So, for example, Flexo. I haven't tried it yet, but you know, when I read what Flexo does, this could be really, really interesting and really useful. So, Flexo, um, you know, it it kind of allows you to write a tokenizer for text files. So it gives you uh, this example of I think the, these are. It, it does an example with chess games or or oh no, not chess games or, yeah, that's. Yeah, no, Kasparov is Petrock. Okay, so he's a bird with a Petrock. And uh, so this is a tic-tac-toe game. So how do you parse that? Well, you just build, you know, this... Uh, you just define the regexes to split the game. And then you use Flexo and you, you kind of get all the tokens. Very... V can be very useful. So it's very specialized kind of package. But it's definitely something that if, if you have like a weird maybe in-house built system that does log files in a weird way and you get these weird logs for example and you have to write complicated regex expressions to um regex expressions atm machine uh, regular expressions to get out the tokens well this could 
potentially be very useful. Another package that I haven't tried as well, uh, because I haven't had the opportunity yet, but which I w really keep in mind to try out if ever I'm confronted to that, is this uh, ZSTD light, which um, compresses objects. So R already has something similar, which is save RDS and read RDS, which allows you to uh, save objects, compress them and save them, any type of object, data, model, or whatever. And this from what my understanding does the same thing um, maybe just for data though I'm not entirely sure I'm not sure also if you should use that into pro in production uh, yet or ever maybe but I find it's you know it's 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 interesting to 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 read about it it's interesting to um, try it out maybe for some use cases it could be useful Again, I don't want to recommend it for production because I don't think it's meant for that. But definitely, if you're interested, you know, just send him a tweet asking him the question or, or write a, maybe an issue. And then there's also some useless packages, of course, like a 3D extension <laughs> for ggplot. So you can build very nice um, 3D ggplots. And uh, as you see, some <laughs> the 3D pie charts, some are, are, are useless, but actually I think in some cases, like here, could be nice for teaching, to be honest. Uh, t for teaching purposes, I think if you want to show contour plots like this one, that can be useful actually in, in these cases. But then of course you can ob obviously go overboard and do 3D line charts, which are totally crap and useless, but I love it. so great <laughs> and, and he writes a lot of packages that's crazy like it does a package a week or something i mean it's amazing follow him on twitter um he, he, he creates this very interesting packages oh yeah this one also very nice M empathic which kind of gives you you know colors uh, for data frames and things like that so you can like highlight lines so for example highlight everything in gray or you can say well only highlight those that uh, you know where uh, MPG is bigger or whatever, or you know, alternate colors. So this can also be quite useful if you're working a lot, you know, on a, on a terminal, for example, and you want to look at something or whatever. This can be quite helpful, I would say. So definitely, for example, here, seal equals six, highlight those. This can be really useful. So as I said, sometimes it builds use, useful packages, and I feel cheated because his use is <laughs> his handle is cool but useless. Anyway, follow him on Twitter, check out his, uh, his uh, GitHub page, and remember that he's a bird, and uh, that he, he builds more packages than, than all of us combined, so, you know, we really have to uh, step up our game. Uh, applied Economics with R. So this is a short uh, tutorial slash book uh, by Hans Sievertsen, um, which I think is really nice. So if you're, if you're like um, an econometrics student, check it out uh, because it is straight to the point teaches you how to load data how to clean it then you know getting some ordinary least squares some instrumental variable regression and diff diff and diff so that's you know I, I i know professional economists that only do that and and uh, it's not a criticism i mean it's when when it's when you have to do it, you, you just do it and it's, uh, it's useful. There, these are very useful methods, so definitely check it out. It's a very short and straight to the point, uh, no bullshit book. I really enjoyed it, reading it, and uh, very recently updated. Check it out. And, uh, and I'm I not sure uh, that uh, Hans is, uh, is on Twitter or, you know, but maybe if you, he, he does seem to have a GitHub a page so you know may maybe he maybe check it check out uh, what else what else he, he works on and i think uh, it could be quite useful finally finally so drake the drake package uh i made a video about it i think i might have written a blog post about it um it's being uh let's say depre deprecated i think is how you pronounce it, in favor of targets. Uh, so from my understanding, Drake is still going to exist, but targets is becoming the kind of new, um, let's say, generation. Uh, so these packages are um, 
build automation tools so they allow you to write pipelines from from step zero acquiring data to step n publishing your r markdown and in a fully automated and reproducible way it's great um, targets as far as i know is still being developed it's still as you see 0 0.000 but it's under review um, on github it looks great it looks simpler it looks lighter a little bit uh, than um, you know than 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 drake check it out check out drake as well i mean drake will still exist and um, i guess you know very critical bugs will still be fixed but if you need to start like a new project and you want to have this reproducible pipeline then maybe we uh, you know use use targets instead of drake uh, but I think you can still kind of from the Drake manual kind of get you know some some here you have these videos that kind of explain you uh, you know what what's it what it's about what reproducible workflows are are and I guess you know some more general uh, let's say um, chapters might still be very relevant for for targets so anyway check it out and um, and yeah and uh, and and follow so I. I don't want to mispronounce his name, but Will Landau Lando has also a Twitter account, so follow him on Twitter. And uh, yeah, and just uh, if you're for interested into these build automation tools, definitely, uh, definitely star this this repo, and um, and uh, try to you know stay up to date with uh, with the developments because I think this is going to be great. Anyway. As I as I um, as I finish this video, I want to say again thank you to everyone who watches, who subscribes, who likes, who shares my content, who follows me on Twitter. I have liked and enjoyed man much more much more content than just what I'm showing you. So if you you know if you're generally interested into um, data science and statistics and all that jazz, follow me on Twitter because I like and retweet a lot of other content. Um, also a lot of, of crap and memes, but uh, you know, that's Twitter. So again, thank you very much for your support. Uh, happy New Year. I hope it's going to be better than this year. And um, well, see you soon on YouTube or on Twitter or on my blog. Hope you enjoyed and goodbye.